So there's a bunch of videos on YouTube where people will get a Dyson fan and compare it with a cheap desk fan. And they'll use a decibel meter to check the loudness and they'll check the airflow. And the kind of conclusion they make is that the cheap fan beats the Dyson fan. But actually what's going on is they're just missing out on a whole bunch of key differences to make that point and get the views. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience with these Dyson fans. This isn't sponsored by Dyson in any way. I bought these fans with my own money and I've used them for a number of years in this house. And there is real value in the engineering in these fans and I'm going to explain why in this video. And what's really interesting is some of the things I've discovered in researching this video actually show that using a cheap fan can actually be quite seriously damaging to your health. We're going to get onto that in a second. This channel documents my attempts at kind of optimizing day-to-day -day experiences through good product design and interesting workflows. And keeping cool when you're sat working on a computer all day in the summer is no exception to this. The first thing I want to talk about is the sound profile itself. So it's not enough just to talk about decibels because our psychoacoustic preferences will actually favor sounds like white noise over sounds that are more like a hum. And if you've ever lived with a cheap desk fan, you'll know the sound they make really is very much like a hum. Whereas with a Dyson fan, the sound is completely different. It's not like a typical fan at all. Sure, the decibels might still be there, but it's just so much more pleasant to listen to. It does just sound like white noise. And a lot of people actually seek white noise because they find it so soothing to listen to. So that's a really significant point and it's just obviously overlooked if you're just comparing on decibels alone. So there's so much crazy design engineering that's gone into these things to make them sound as pleasant as they do. They use Helmholtz cavities to adjust certain frequencies and balance things out. The impeller design itself has got weird shapes on the ends of the fins to change the way that sounds and the design is asymmetrical so that it harmonizes and balances out this sound and all of this really interesting stuff to make these things sound as good as they do. And if you ever compare them side by side, it it's immediately obvious. I think one of the biggest oversights of these kinds of videos is they compare Dyson fans that have purifiers in them with a normal fan that doesn't do any purifying. Of course, the implication of that is the Dyson fan has to work so much harder because it's sucking air through a filter. So obviously the filter is gonna restrict the airflow. So expecting it to deliver the same kind of airflow without a penalty and noise is a bit of an unfair expectation to start with. And now we're getting into where the real value lies. So the fact that they purify the air indoors is actually really significant. Obviously people think about air purifying in their room as a way of improving the air quality in their room and they might buy a purifier which will just sort of slowly circulate the air in the room purifying it and that's great but in the summer using a fan to cool down is really beneficial and especially if you sort of you know spray a bit of water on your shirt or something like that the active cooling effect of having an airflow flow over you is significant but if you just use a cheap fan for that what happens is it actually disrupts all of the dust in your room and can actually make the air quality in your room way worse so you're breathing in all of these particles and you could be triggering asthma attacks and all all sorts of stuff just by using a fan. So you need a fan and a purifier to combat that issue. Well, the Dyson, of course, is just one product. So when you frame it like that, and you start to think in terms of if you are gonna use a fan that you absolutely should have a purifier to combat the effect of all of the dust being blown around in your house, then the price of the Dyson fan starts to look much more reasonable as well. And the interesting thing about this is the 2.5 micron size particles, the ones that are really detrimental to our health, are the ones that stay airborne for longest. So if you're disrupting them and putting them all into the air, with a fan, they're gonna stay in the air in your room for a really long time. So if you're concerned about this 2.5 micron size particle matter in the air, the nice thing about the Dyson fan is that it'll actually show you the levels of that stuff in your air. So you know that it's actually working to purify it out of the air and you know that just because you've got the airflow turned on, even if that dust is initially disturbed when you first turn the fan on, it is then actively taking it back out of the air and filtering it out. And you can see that reported in real time on these graphs in the app and on the screen of the thing itself and that is just really cool. Now the next way I think that these videos are massively misrepresenting where the value really lies is they just kind of focus on the performance at maximum power. Having a fan at maximum power is a pretty extreme thing to do in a, in a room, you know, even with a cheap fan or an expensive Dyson, having it on maximum power is really loud and there's a significant amount of airflow. So maybe on a couple of days of the year, you might want that massive power. But actually last week we had 30 degrees outside temperature. And in this room, I had the Dyson fan on six, six out of 10. That was all I needed to feel super comfortable for the whole day working at the computer in this small kind of hot room with the computers running. And then for the rest of the year, this thing is on level one or two or, you know, maybe three if it's quite warm. It's super low. And then of course, it's really quiet on those levels. Now, this was actually one of the main reasons I bought the Dyson fans in the first place was because they have this super low level mode. Because I knew that actually all I really needed in the office for the most part of the year was just this gentle airflow. And cheap desk fans actually don't have this 
low level mode, not just because it's a design issue, it's because they can't. The cheap motors they use just can't run at super low levels. Whereas the brushless DC motors in the Dyson fan can run at high torque, even at low speeds. So this kind of benefit is actually pretty inherent in the technology differences between these two fans as well. I just want to talk a little bit about this amplifier design. So when they first launched these fans, they did make a big song and dance about how this kind of bladeless design amplified the airflow and all of this. And I think that is probably the bit that is the most overhyped. But it doesn't really matter because there's no real penalty for it. It's still a pleasant airflow. And of course, if you're thinking about a device that's a purifier and a fan, there has to be a place where the filter is and it has to suck air through the filter. So you kind of need to have this system where you've got the filter in one place and then it expels the filtered air. So the whole approach is actually really logical and it makes sense that they would use this amplifier design where the idea is the air coming out from the ring actually draws additional air through and increases your airflow. But of course, the reality is any airflow from any fan is still going to have that kind of effect where it will suck additional air in with it. So I don't think you're getting any crazy advantage as a result of that. So in the base of the fan with all these little tiny holes behind there, there's actually these replaceable filters and that's where it draws all of the air in. And then it, and then the impeller in that area will actually then build up pressure and then push out the air through the ring. And that's how it all works. Now, what's interesting about that is it's actually quite a different approach to the way a normal fan works with the big blades, which essentially just sort of you know throw air at you as those big blades turn. Well, the impeller design inside the Dyson fan is designed to actually build static pressure as well as airflow. Normally a fan will either be good at static pressure or airflow. The impeller design inside the Dyson is good at both because it needs to work out quite high pressure to suck the air in through the filter, but also it needs to deliver good airflow as well. And in terms of the price, obviously they've got these massive floor standing fans that are $600 and all the rest of it. But actually, if you go on eBay on the Dyson refurb store, you can get this one here, which is a purifier and a fan, and they're just over 200 pounds. So if you compare that with getting a quiet fan, looking at Amazon, any kind of fan that claims to be really nice and quiet, they're over hundred pounds anyway. And then you're just gonna throw all the dust around in your house. So then you need a purifier as well. Again, you're easily looking over hundred pounds for a nice one of those. So the price of these Dyson fans, I don't think is actually that bad either, as long as you don't kind of follow the, the upsell path and get their most expensive models. So I really don't think Dyson fans are any kind of scam. Uh, there is some really interesting, fascinating engineering there, but sometimes big brands do use their marketing power to sell ideas that really don't actually stack up when you look closely at them. And an example of that is Gore-Tex raincoats. So watch this video next, where I look at how actually that is really quite a deceptive marketing strategy. And there's some really interesting science behind that too. So I'll see you there.